Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Tuesday, December 16th, 2014. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to ask for a moment of silence to reflect on our duties as a board for the town and also for our soldiers both in the United States and abroad for their safety especially during this holiday season. Thank you. Um, in accordance with Mass General Laws, I have to announce that this meeting is being recorded by the Sun Metal Cable Access and also by the Board of Selectmen, the Board of Selectmen's office, and I have to ask if anyone else is recording the meeting. I guess right now the answer is no, but I'm sure when Chris comes back, that may turn it into a yes, and we have to ask him again. Um, our 6 o'clock appointment, running a few minutes late, is Arlene Miller. Come on up, Arlene. How are you? This is a tough table to shake hands at. Good to see you. Hi, Arlene. And you were here for a couple reasons. Primarily to talk trash, I hope. No. Well, we always like to trash talk, so. That's that's good. Good. Uh, do you want me to just start? Or? Sure. I think the first item is the contract. Uh, or the some Halloween sort of contract? Yep. Yeah, just, um, I don't know if any of you were on the board five years ago. I you was, were. Yep. When we did that, um, I should start by saying that uh, the town of, towns of East Long Meadow and Long Meadow have a long history of partnership and working together, I think unique among the communities in the valley. We've done lots of things over the years uh, as partners together, and one of them, most recently, is, is this uh, five-year trash contract that's coming to a, a conclusion at the end of June this year. We went out to bid together. We have separate contracts with a hauler, but yet we negotiated together. Mm -hmm. And you can only imagine if you're a hauler and you're talking about 5,500 homes versus 11,000 homes or 10,000 homes, which one would be more desirable to you? Mm -hmm. So um, just to let you know, Longmeadow is, has had conversations, preliminary conversations with the public services, as I know you have. Mm -hmm. uh, we've asked for a quote, and as you have, mm -hmm. uh, but and we told them very clearly that we would be speaking to you mm -hmm. with the intention of trying to partner again mm -hmm. uh, with the process. Um, they tried to minimize the value of that. I believe it's in our best interest, if you believe that, to be together in that in that operation, that the way that negotiation. Mm -hmm. um, if if their quote doesn't come back very very desirable, the town of Longmeadow is prepared to go out to bid. Okay. And we we have an RFP, our joint RFP ready to go out the door. Okay. So that is not, time is not a limitation for us under that. So I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to say to you is, uh, it, I'm, although I have no authority <laughs> whatsoever as I say this to you, um, I am working with Stephen Crane and Mike Grable in Longmeadow on the group that is, is talking to, to Republic Services. I do this as a, through my job as Mass D, with MassDEP, mm -hmm. and, um, but I have no not, and I have not been blessed by Stephen Crane to come and say anything to you one way or another. So it's my hope that we will continue to both ways communicate about progress and not allow the uh, hauler to split us aside so they can negotiate a better deal for themselves. I mm -hmm. truly believe we can do better together. But that's you know certainly okay. your decision, mm -hmm. not our decision. But we will be we will be in touch with you. Okay. you <laughs> not, we don't want to haunt you, but right. to try to create well, that, fine. that partnership. That's fine. Because it's worked, it's worked well the last few contracts. So, um, you know, once again, I know it, it is a new board. So, um, I'm just speaking for myself in the fact that I've been through this process. So I know, I know how well it worked, and I know that uh, that we got a good deal. So, once again, when when the numbers come in, we'll see what changes, if any, or well, the thing that even happened that that was most remarkable. I thought the last time and Nick was involved with it uh, as well was. Once they, they, we are allowed to negotiate under Massachusetts general law on mm -hmm. these kind of contracts. They're exempt from some of the bidding laws because it's trash. And this is why we can sort of do this. Mm -hmm. When the numbers came back, you don't have to take the lowest bidder. Mm -hmm. You can negotiate. And so when the numbers came back the last time, we brought in the top 
three mm -hmm. uh, per persons or, or yep, companies, and we said, what can you do to sharpen your pencil? And they did. And, <laughs> and, and, Al and Republic came down and, were, and turned out to be, we, were, we, we wound up our two towns paying less going into that contract than we were paying at the time for our other haul. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was a great deal. The other way, we, other time we've cooperated most recently is with the Covanta negotiations. Same mm -hmm. kind of thing happened. And it was mm -hmm. the numbers, the group numbers that enabled us to bring that cost down to mm -hmm. where it is. If you mentioned what we paid to the city of Springfield, <coughs> they, get, they get pale because they negotiated on their own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they did not get the deal with them. Right. Okay. So. All right. So obviously we'll definitely keep that in our thoughts as we go forward, same with you. Uh, yes? Is Springfield looking to negotiate as a group um, with Long Meadow and Slow Meadow? For what? For the trash. No, Springfield actually has their own trucks and they can't collect their own trash. Okay. They don't go out for with a private home. Okay. okay. Yeah, and you have to be on the same sort of calendar in order to do that. Mm -hmm. And so we actually worked it mm -hmm. um, about six years ago to be sure we were running on the same uh, uh, contract calendar, Long Meadow, New Slow Meadow. Mm -hmm. One of us, it might have been you, had to extend a year, or we had to extend a year. We had to do something right, to get internally. On the same page, I can't so remember speak, exactly yeah. which, who did what. Yeah, I don't remember either. But, but yeah. it was to get on the same e expiration date, and mm -hmm. so that makes it very advantageous mm -hmm. in, in our circumstance. That's and right. I know this, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I just want to know is there any talk of anybody else joining us making it more advantageous for us? Um, no. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a question. No, uh, that's a good question. Uh, around us, there, there was an, another town that has that kind of a service. And the closest would be Ludlow, and that Ludlow, because the geographic right. separation, it doesn't okay. make it as advantageous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I know they've done a wonderful job, you know, with the collection and everything. So they have. Yeah. I know that from the previous, nothing, not to cast dispersions, but I know the previous haulers before that were. I went back to my youth with the gentleman hanging off the back of the truck, and <laughs> it was a quite. You know, I remember that from being a child in Springfield. So it was a lot of interesting stories. to go back to that. A, a yeah. lot of stories uh, in our experience with that company, and it uh, taught us all. Yes. Some stuff. Uh, all right. All right. Next is the Murph contract. Yes, I brought with me, and I don't know if you have seen this or not. This is a summary that I have prepared. Um, Thank you. Or, um, and sent around. You've seen this. Uh, it's just a summary of the contract. I, I don't know if you've seen the contract or not. Have you looked at it? Uh, it has been presented to the board at a previous meeting. Okay, fine. So, uh, so it's not, no surprise. Um, I think it's important to say that the contract we currently have, we happened to negotiate five years ago at a very um, desirable time mm -hmm. and it is a very very uh, generous contract to the communities the contract we're looking at is not as generous and because mm -hmm. and that's because the markets are not as markets were very high when we negotiated the last time and therefore we were really uh, they wanted us so badly and they, every, we got just about anything we asked for so it was very good very good in the current contract for our system which is dual stream we separate bottles and cans mm -hmm. from paper um, we're guaranteed fifty dollars fifteen dollars sixty seven cents for every ton we deliver of any kind of material and then there's a revenue share on top of that and currently we're getting about twenty four dollars a ton this pa this past six months where a couple of years ago when the market was really high we got up to about forty five dollars a ton arguments which is a great nice little infusion of, of cash. Mm -hmm. This current contract, because the markets have dropped and are not so consistent, they're, they're fluctuating much more, uh, is not that generous, they're, but they are guaranteeing us a couple of things. One is, no matter what happens in the market, we'll never have to pay a tip fee. Okay. Now, for us, that's a, uh, it's, if you stay, if you stay dual stream, that's a moot point, because they're guaranteeing dual stream communities, that would be Long Meadow and East Long Meadow, $10 a ton, plus a revenue share. Then the revenue share, instead of it being 50-50, when it gets above a certain amount, is 60-40 to the benefit of the community, but it's a higher bar, it's a $65 or something like that, $62 bar. Um, it's not 60, I'm wrong, it's 55-45, um, not 60-40. So 55-45 um, for the split. Mm -hmm. So we might, we, you know, we might get up to $20 a ton, but it won't be the, the kind of money that we've had in the past, mm -hmm. but we will not have, we have a guaranteed place to bring it, we, ha we will be guaranteed revenue for it, and 
and it's a close location for our communities. It's mm -hmm. very convenient for our haulers to <coughs> go there. So uh, there, there are other things, th th like no CPI adjustment, but these contracts don't tend to have that kind of an adjustment anyhow. They tend to be a flat negotiated contract for the life of the contract. Now, if for any reason you wanted to change during the five years of the contract to either sink a stream, there's no penalty to do that, or if you want to get out of the contract, it's simply notify them, you know, two weeks or 30 days, there's no penalty to get out of this contract. So it's not a scary mm -hmm. thing to get into that you right. can't get out of. Um, clearly, they're, they're giving an incentive, and I can't remember the drop off, the drop dead date that was in that letter. Do you remember what it was? No, no, uh, if you sign early, they'll pay your public education fee for the first That's year, right. and it's, which is a yeah. nominal fee. It's like you $100, isn't it? It's, 50 cent, it's five yeah. cents that per capita. Yeah. And we've never, you don't see it because we don't really pay it, it's deducted from our revenue. Mm -hmm. And since we've always been getting revenue, we don't really see that, it's sort of just it's deducted. So I'm recommending to, to communities, I wish it was a more lucrative um, contract, I'm recommending that they sign it. If uh, it's a five-year contract, I'm not sure in East Long Meadow if you have to go before town meeting for that signature or not for five years, you might. I I have to uh, get back to the board. And I will be I'm sending out, sure I'll send out some draft language for, for town meeting votes, if you care to have that. But um, I know in our town we've passed some sort of bylaw some time ago that allows us to do five-year contracts, so mm -hmm. we don't have to go to town meeting, but you, you may have to do that. But So that would eliminate your, I'm not sure the uh, incentive is after that or before that. The, the, um, through the chairman, the, mm -hmm. the town meeting did m make a vote on that last year. Um, but uh, I have to see if oh, it's five year. Yeah, I, I have to see and make sure that it applies. So mm -hmm. the, that process has been gone. I need to make sure it applies. Oh, great. Uh, through um, the chair, mm -hmm. do we have we've um, had the two five year um, contracts correct? Do we have to go into a five year? Um, is there room for us to go into a small, um, a shorter term? No, but you can get out of this very easily. The contract term is five years. Okay. With what? the they're, they're not. They're mode. not. They're not offering uh, different. Okay. Every so town is the same. So it's either five years or or just or come on else. in and or come on in and leave. Yeah. And, leave. Yeah. and they're sort of the only game in town. Well, they were the only game in town. Uh, that's true. <laughs> uh, but there may be, uh, you know, other, you know, if tomorrow, if, if they're in our hauling, looking for a hauler, somebody comes in and says, I would like to take your, your recycling as well can mm -hmm. they offer you a deal this oh, okay. you lose nothing by signing this contract because okay. it's so easy to get there's no penalty there's no it almost sounds too good to be true well it it is good okay it's a it's a it's a use it's a very friendly contract to the municipalities you know set over 70 municipalities join this it's a it's a great regional entity okay that's been terrific for, for our towns and for the region and certainly they need to they need to make us happy okay. but um, they come I don't I don't know that somebody else is going to come in and want to have take a step there's no other MRF close by here they would have to mm -hmm. transport the materials okay. either by rail or by truck mm -hmm. elsewhere so okay. just a question okay. no no and I, and I think some people are looking because the revenue is less than we had and so sometimes they're looking and saying well maybe we can do better uh, I doubt that would be the reality but you know, if you can, great. Mm -hmm. And you, you did receive, I hope, the uh, holiday. Yes, we'll be putting that up on the uh, website. Yeah, the schedule for the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. it's not a schedule well, so much as well, it's it's, an, it's a commodity. Materials. It's 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 all the the wonderful things you can really recycle during the holiday. You don't have to throw away wrapping okay. paper except for the the, the foiled paper. Mm -hmm. Gift, so you, gift you, cards. Yeah, you, know, you can you cannot recycle ribbons, bows, and tinsel. Packing peanuts, a styrofoam, holiday lights, plastic bags, blister packaging, or photographs. And you can recycle corrugated cardboard boxes, paper, paperboard gift boxes, greeting cards, except those with foil, metallic inks, or glitter, wrapping paper, gift bags, tissue wrap, except for those with foil, metallic inks, or glitter, paper shopping bags, any type of handle, catalogs, and calendars. So we have this, we'll go up on our website. And yeah. If you want this back. Yeah, okay, thanks. And then right. the, the last thing that Nick asked me to mention was the hazardous waste event and how, again, another regional uh, event with five communities. In fact, this year we had six. Mm -hmm. We invited Palmer to participate on a limited basis. Uh, that worked out fine for us. We had about 230 cars 
uh, participate. Mm -hmm. We've been doing it at uh, the Minichog Regional High School for mm -hmm. the last two years. This is that where it's going to be again? I haven't had got permission, but I will mm -hmm. be looking into okay. that. We're looking at a September date already. Uh, so it was uh, turned out great, and part of our our contract, our hauling contract, is that the hauler pays for yes. your, yeah. your portion of the event, Long mm -hmm. Meadows portion of mm -hmm. the event. And That's this nice. year it cost us somewhere about $2,500, $2,600. I think it was 20, yeah, 28 28 for mm -hmm. us. I think Long Meadows was a little bit more than that. Yep. Um, but it's, just always a help. It's, it's a great service mm -hmm. to get that stuff out of the households. And I'm sure the yes, fire chief, who's uh, Paul, who yeah. worked with us on it, will attest to the better to have it collected than in a house burning down. That's so right. This is true. That's right. And I worked on the last one in East Long Meadow, which yeah, that was a turned into that Field of Dreams yeah. site there at the end. But that's it was another a story for another day. It was so. a challenge. <laughs> yes. We did our best. Thank, we have to so thank a reporter for that. That helped us. Yes. There you go. Yeah. All right. So do you have any questions? I don't think so. I think obviously we'll be, you know, we'll be talking to Republic and we'll be following, we'll be corresponding and, you know, speaking and seeing what's going on. So we should be talking to Nick yes. or you? Yep, yeah, Nick will be the best contact. Okay, great. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Arlene. Have a nice holiday. Thanks, you too. Okay. Break a leg, please. Don't break a leg, please. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Before I sit down, <laughs> our, next, our next appointment is Carolyn Brennan. This is not convenient. No, it's not convenient. How are you today? Good. Um, we have to begin today. Uh, you got a citation. I did. A citation from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I might as well read this because I think it's something that's a feather in your cap and obviously the towns for having the forethought of hiring you. So, uh, Carolyn Brennan, on behalf of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I'm pleased to confer upon you this governor's citation in recognition of your dedicated service to the statewide coordinating council on community transportation and an appreciation of your commitment to advancing the community transportation system to meet the mobility needs of the Commonwealth citizens. It's 24th day of October in the year 2014 to Bob Patrick Governor. Congratulations. Thank you. And to that end, I believe you got a little grant for your... Um, two separate issues, um, yeah. but just to explain a little bit about what, where that cit citation came from, um, that was that governing council um, was a result of um, the governor's uh, executive order, actually 530, which was to improve community and peer transit services across the Commonwealth, better coordination. So um, it was members of MassDOT and the Office of Health and Human Services and stakeholders. So I was there on behalf of COAs and older riders for mm -hmm. paratransit. So we met um, three or four times during 2013 and 2014, and then we set up regional coordinating councils, which I'm a part of here in Western Mass. So it's been really good. Um, it's a great place that all of the stakeholders, and it's across the, the board, it's employ employment providers for transportation, mixing with paratransit, but it's regardless of mobility issues, it's mm -hmm. just trying to advocate at the state level. So that's where that came from. So it was a, it was a very good thing to be a part of when we're still meeting on a regular basis. So okay. congratulations. Yeah. So a separate um, thing from that is um, we did get additional funding. I wrote a grant um, for a service incentive grant for the Executive Office of Elder Affairs for the rest of this year for 39000 to support two-town trolley. So yep. that's um, Great. huge, huge relief. So, mm -hmm. Good. Um, but just to give you a little bit of report on Two Town Trolley, as you know, dispatching, um, we brought dispatching back here to East Long Meadow mm -hmm. um, and have hired um, different staff and we have a dispatcher now and we are, um, it's, it's a very coordinated services between Hansen and East Long Meadow. The really, really good news is we are totally booked. The really, really bad news is we're turning about 30 rides away wow. a week. So we have some disgruntled people because they're not happy, but we, the, the grants really only fund service from 9 to 2.30, 3 o'clock. So, um, you know, we feel bad about that. Um, I think there's some frustration. Mm -hmm. We could easily put our spare van on the road if we had the funding. Right, but right now it's fully funded by grants and donations. Mm -hmm. So we'll get there. We're going to keep advocating and to get more funding. obviously the need is there if you're Definitely the need is there. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the chair, how mm -hmm. do you decide who gets... It's hard to turn people away. How do you decide who gets um, the service? Well, Is we have first regular first riders serve? who've been riding for over two years. Okay. And, and our priority are senior center trips and okay. medical trips. 
Okay. So unfortunately, we really can't do um, any kind of, you know, social, uh, outside of the senior center, we can't do anything that's like hairdressing or shopping. Okay. If we can fit it in, we will. Okay. Um, but one of the benefits of coordinating it regionally with a small service is we can consolidate. I can get five people on the van, which is much less expensive than just transporting okay. one person at a time. So mm -hmm. we can just go through a neighborhood or a housing authority. Mm -hmm and say, look, we're going to the senior center at 930, mm -hmm. so if you want to go, you got to go at that time. Okay. PDTA, through their paratransit service, because of That's ADA, right. has a lot more difficulty because of ADA regulations to be able to be that flexible. Okay. So we just have a lot more flexibility, which makes it much more cost efficient. So that's okay. what we advocate for to keep it more at a local level. So we okay. can't provide all the transportation, but PDTA is excellent in humans. And so and that they the would services take care of the hairdresser provide, and that stuff? Yes, we can refer it to them. Okay. So Great. And to that end, you have an update on the van driver. Yes, we um, un unfortunately our two part-time drivers, um, one of our drivers, um, their position was terminated and an another driver um, has been ill. So at the same time, we were without drivers. So we have hired some temporary drivers who actually are my Meals on Wheels drivers. Oh, okay. So the days that they aren't delivering meals, okay. they're driving the van. Mm -hmm. And that's worked out really well. So that is on a temporary basis until we really see what's going to work. And what's, mm -hmm. um, but they've been excellent. I mean, to be a yeah. Meals on Wheels driver, you have to have a heart for seniors. Mm -hmm. So the transition was really good. So yeah, it worked. Was it last year or the year before we rode with? The Meals on Wheels people. For uh, that's m that's. Uh, Is it coming up? Or? Oh yeah. Okay. March. For that was meals. that was very interesting. That'll be like in March, so we'll be inviting everybody. It, it to was eye opening. It really know, is. And everyone who does it rely appreciates on that. it. You know, I mean, you, you think it's a meal, but obviously people rely on it. So. Yeah, and it's that one extra person mm -hmm. going into the home to yes, check on it. Yes, that's true. Yeah, for people who may not have. Yeah. Many so even if they don't like fish for the day, they've got somebody coming in right. to say hi. How you doing? So. Right. Great. Very good. All right. I think that's it. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I believe that there's a member of the president's come in to the meeting. Oh, through, thanks. Okay. Yes. Oh, no. That was this year? We got it already? Or yes. We just applied for it? No, I think we, we got it. Well, we're going to get it because it, it's been signed. So we can. Nice. Um, before we proceed, I just want to make note, uh, once again, pursuant to Mass General Laws, I see Ben in the room. I just want to know, are you taping the meeting? Not at this point. Oh, okay. Will you be taping the meeting? Okay. Not that exciting in topics, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks. Our next appointment is with Kareem Traeasy, our Benefits Administration Manager. How are you? How are you? Good, you? Um, well, thank you. If it's okay with you, I think I'd like to go out of order and sure. domestic violence, well, it says Domestic Violence Act, it's more the Domestic Violence Leave Act, where okay. we're required to uh, allow people to take time off who are either victims of domestic violence or have family members who are victims of mm -hmm. domestic violence. It is um, an unpaid leave where people are able to do it. I think we sent you the advice of the attorney where mm -hmm they advise that we have them just use all their paid time off before they even access the Domestic Violence Leave Act. Uh, that would be one question we would need you to answer if you were going to make them use vacation time to deal with these issues mm. before they were able to take time off to maybe go to court or go to counseling or therapy or anything like that. Um, Is there a set time, if you will, number of days? Um, there is a set amount that's, of hours. That, that's I believe tough it's to quantify, obviously, because you don't know what. You know, I've been going with the Affordable Care Act and everything else, and back and forth. I want to say it's 40 hours. Okay. A week. I mean, 40 hours in a calendar year. A calendar year. Um, that may be incorrect, just because I have okay. a lot of numbers and okay. a lot of different things right now in mm -hmm. my head. Um, that sounds about right. It was. Um, some talk outs on that then that sounds like it is for you I I personally would know we do this is already in effect and we do have employees who are who have requested time off where mm -hmm. they don't want to have to tell their supervisor mm -hmm. where they need to go mm -hmm. um, we've worked around it right now and just told them to take it unpaid mm -hmm. and you know well if if whatever you decide if you decided it was something that they could have used sick pit time for or something we could give it back to them or whatever but mm -hmm. they were okay with just taking it for 
unpaid right. and okay. being out for the time. Okay. Um, so, I mean, th it's not like we can decide how many hours we want to give them. It's mm -hmm. the law. The law is right. pretty clear on all that. Right. The big decisions are whether or not um, you want to allow them to use sick time mm -hmm. when they're dealing with this, mm -hmm. um, and whether or not you want them to exhaust vacation time or right. personal time or comp time mm -hmm. before. Through the chair. Mm -hmm. It does it. Would it be acceptable for them to use their have the choice of whether or not they wanted to use sick time versus vacation or have it unpaid? Does that create a problem for you, for them to de for the person who's in, in the situation to decide? The only the only problem it could create is with other leaves and having to give the ability to use your time. You can't just necessarily pick. If you have unpaid time, mm -hmm. um, such as um, like FMLA or something like that, mm -hmm. they all have to kind of follow the same policy of, mm -hmm. of not with this. I'm sorry. Okay. No, I'm, I'm just. I don't think that this one has to follow that. But I'm not. I mean, it's un sure. you can just make it unpaid. Right. So it's unpaid time off. Exactly. The question is, is whether or not you want them like to you be able to use it use their paid time off okay. while they're out. I mean, obviously, I if someone has vacation time, they probably won't even tell us what they're going for. They'll just right. use their right, time. Right. Vacation time, though, sometimes you have to put it in in advance. They can't control when it's going to happen or when exactly. they're going to need it. Um, okay. If we're going to have a discussion on it, I have some thoughts. Okay. Well, yeah, why don't we just... Yeah. I do believe um, Layla Taylor, our <coughs> Labor Council, will be here on the 6th, Nick, I think, in January 6th. So if we wanted to get more clarifications from her answers. I think we would have to get yeah, more to do that. Definitely, clarification. Definitely, because I, I mean, you know, it's a tough topic, and my personal thought is I don't want to see someone involved in a domestic mm -hmm. violence case having to use vacation time. I mean, that's exactly. you know, thinking I agree. in and a quite humanitarian honestly, way. You know, that was what was asked, was why yeah. should yeah. I have to use yeah. my vacation time? Exactly. Yeah. I think they're going through enough, um, mm -hmm. going through the domestic um, situation on in its own. So I, speaking I statements, I would prefer for them to be able to make that choice. Um, they would know their circumstances better than we would. Right. And I would think that they would be able to use sick time, vacation time, or, or take it unpaid. Or just go unpaid mm -hmm. and yeah. save their vacation time exactly. for later right. in the year. Exactly, right. for a happier time. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I think it's a good idea to listen to Layla. Yeah. Some, you know, more sure. Um, did I read something about 15 days in there? They get 15 days they can take. No. It, you know, I, like I said, the numbers are not on the top of my head. I'm sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. Um, I, that wasn't what was in my head. The most important part was because it's the law, and we have to give them yeah, right. what we have to give them. Does say it. Yeah. It is 15 days. Mm -hmm. It does say it 15 days, okay. but there's some other th um, mm -hmm. factors right. in the speak out in front of the governor's office. They were talking about um, some other factors that factor into this. So I think it would be wise to listen to counsel mm -hmm. and make sure. But if we're talking about personal things, I just think. You know, they should be able to choose which one they want. And this to. goes across the board, mm -hmm. whether it's full time or part time, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. they're an employee. So, yeah. Corinne, do they have to give a reason to their employer for why they're? Or you know, could to, an kind of to an extent, there's certain documentation, which is the other question: is what kind of documentation mm -hmm. are we going to require people to produce? Yeah. There's some things you can't require them. You can, um, you know, you can certainly ask for a note from the doctor's office if they were for counseling. You can certainly ask for a note saying um, that they were at a court appearance. They don't necessarily have to say what it was, um, especially when you start getting into their family mm -hmm. members and things like that right. and confidentiality yeah, and everything. A lot of stuff we probably don't want to know. Yeah. Yeah. And the court can supply a generic um, notice yes. stating that they were in court without giving all of the details, mm -hmm. just saying that they were subpoenaed or that they needed to be there. Yeah. Um, the advocate will usually um, do something of that along I'm those sure there's lines. Something that can be provided to us that we can accept without yeah. having to. Right. I think the big thing is is that. No, I don't know how you really avoid it if you tell a supervisor this person needs two hours off and it's, you know, that's all there is to it. They're going to be leaving for two hours today, you know. Mm -hmm. They may be able to guess what it's for, 
-hmm. but there's no reason why they need to know. Right. Okay. And that may be for? something that can be clarified by Labor Council too as to what, what we can actually get. Because you don't want... I don't want police reports in my office. Well, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And you don't want people to to abuse the system, which is a lousy choice of words, but it's the only thing, you know, right. um, and use it for for times that the, it's not the incident, you know, it's not an incident that it's right. it should be exactly. used for. So, yeah, I think we'll get some, we'll get some uh, clarification on that and go from there. I think the abuse may go more the other way, though, and they may call in sick mm. to go to a court appearance. True. If we don't, you know, so. Yeah, that's why you got to walk that fine line of, you have to get some, some, information but you don't want to get you don't want to require so much information that they're not going to tell you at all just go other avenues to right. handle it so be hard to track. yeah yeah very hard true. to track in the police and yeah and as it is right now we don't request documentation until they're out for three days mm -hmm. okay. have to protect for most of the departments some may handle right. it differently but for the most part mm -hmm. it's a three-day absence okay. Okay. thank you now the fun part <laughs> The next one is our lovely acronym of the ACA, so known as the Affordable Care Act. Um, Amongst other things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose I could come up with some others for you. Uh, this is a huge employer responsibility that we need to do and we need to put mechanisms in place. We need to make decisions about um, classifying employees and determining uh, look back periods, there's all sorts of, there's a look back period, an administration period, a stability period. I don't know how much you really want me to say here or if you want to just come up with a plan to have a presentation for you or if you want to come and meet with me individually and we talk about things and iron out questions, but it's, it's a very, in my opinion, it's a very complex, mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of pages if you want to read the actual act. <laughs> well, I noticed you sort of have it in the form of a slideshow type thing. Unless I'm mistaken. I've seen slideshow type things. Yeah. I, I think we sent you a slideshow thing. Yeah. I also have like the Munis, the Munis's version of how they're planning to deal with it. Uh, of course, that said, it means that Munis is set up the way they want it mm -hmm. to be set up to be able to deal with it. Um, the employer reporting and being self-insured mm -hmm. is a whole other responsibility on our shoulders of being part of the Scantic Valley. I do know, um, I'm not sure if Scantic Valley, what they're thinking they're going to do. I do know it was brought up that maybe Scantic Valley can do something to help us educate our people who are making the decisions. We're very committed to helping the towns uh, get through this. We recognize it's been a difficult and arduous task, and, it, and we talked about it before being in the scope, even funding uh, extra help. Mm -hmm. some, some way to we're in a position, we, we, we can use our money that way, but I think we right. might be able to uh, to make it so that it's um, not that arduous a task and that it's done correctly. Right. And this is something, obviously, that all the employees should understand. The employees should understand? Um, I, I don't think the education really needs to go out to the employees okay. other than the fact that there are other avenues of getting insurance, the marketplace, the exchanges, all those rules that have come in already, which we're trying to be in compliance with, mm -hmm. um, notifying people that, you know, just because you're not eligible for insurance with us, there is insurance out there for you. You can possibly go get it. Um, there's a lot of good news on our side is, you know, because we offer insurance at 20 hours people who are regularly scheduled 20 or more hours a week, they're offered insurance. The law is 30 hours. Um, where it becomes complicated with the variable hourly employees, mm -hmm. and that's, though I don't think it makes up during certain times of the year, it probably doesn't make up enough of our workforce to be an issue, but during other seasons, summer seasons, mm -hmm. with um, the camps and things like that in place, different coaching staff, um, schools have some variable hour employees, um, all sorts of different classifications and how we want to, we can classify different groups and use different look back periods on mm -hmm. them. Um, it just complicates things having different periods because you're just constantly looking back and mm -hmm. deciding who's eligible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now what's the, like the rollout time frame for this? Um, 2014 was a voluntary year to report, to do the reporting. 
were not set up at all to start doing any reporting with the government. Um, the reports that were that if you were to do it under the voluntary, uh, the reports would be due the end of February for 2014. Um, but it was just to get in the practice of mm -hmm. doing it and you know mm -hmm. checking and seeing. Do you know more about this, Arlene? Um, no, you know more about it than I do. My, but I, but I'm confident of is that the uh, people who help us with the health trust, our advisors, are going to help provide tremendous guidance to mm -hmm. us. And and I also think that that the system is not that clear going forward to those right. people who are opposing the system and that changes will be made as we go along uh, improvements possibly hopefully will be made as we go as we go along and uh, we're in a good position because we have a good relationship with our, our, our consultants and I think mm -hmm. they'll help us through this okay. cool. and we did used to have other reporting responsibilities with the state mm -hmm. the fair share contributions and things like that now mm -hmm. the federal government just calls it pay or play Mm -hmm. but they put in a whole slew of other requirements okay so to the chair are we mm -hmm. so we're not participating in the run through no okay and we don't plan to no when is the mandate for us to have to participate next Feb well we need to start offering insurance to people who are eligible mm -hmm. even if they're eligible because of variable hours okay. that needs to begin for January ish 2015 yes 2015 and the reporting the reporting will be next February by the end of next February for the calendar year 2015 okay so I guess if we were I'm trying to figure out between what Arlene said and what you said if we were to have you come in and just give us some sort of presentation it doesn't have to be long I realize it's probably tough to condense this stuff but some sort of idea of what we have to do. I'm, I'm trying to think if we should do it now or if we should wait, because if you say it's sort of a fluid thing and it doesn't, you know, things might not, be, I'll leave, I'm, gonna, I'm, been, I'm actually turning to you for waiting, this, you know. I think everyone's been waiting to see. I mean, they did initial, they did um, hand out the final rulings, mm -hmm. whether or not they're gonna get repealed or sure. anything uh, like that is a whole nother. That's true too. Yeah. It might you know, be premature. I think what, what, what uh, she's saying and I think it's true is that this is going to be a lot of work involved. Mm -hmm. That it, it is confusing. Uh, and But, uh, we, you know, we, at Scanic Valley we've taken one step at a time and I'm confident that it will be done. And to set it up improperly is just going to be a lot of right. time consumed when we don't have necessarily the resources. Would it make sense to maybe wait and have someone from one of the insurance Well, that's what group, I said, I you know, said um, to Nick, I, you know, our consultants. Yeah, have I them do a little presentation. It. And they're learning, too. I mean, everybody's yeah. learning. It's okay. a new model. And that was the other question was, would, do you want an attorney's viewpoint? Do you want, um, you know, our consultant's viewpoint? Do you want, what view do you want? What advice yeah, do you know. want it from? It could be a different a different beast depending different on who you're speaking yeah, to. Yeah, true. You know, it's all up to interpretation of these rulings and these findings. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I before I start digging in. Oh, well, at least, yeah, share. plus the, I say all the above. Yeah, at least in attorneys, if not that, mm -hmm. and the insurance, you know, mm -hmm. just to see what the differences are and uh, so we know what we're dealing with. So I guess basically once you guys figure out what we're dealing with, then we, you can tell us what we're dealing with. Yeah, I'm caution about, I mean, it is overwhelming mm -hmm. and it is complicated. But I would caution again not to get ahead of ourselves. Right. And that, again, I feel confident that as much as is to be known, will be known by our consultants. Okay. And will be shared with us in a timely manner. And as again, we've offered to try to, you know, there will be cheat sheets created by our consultants. There will be, you know, things, uh, tools. Mm -hmm. Yep. So to help the local communities uh, do this. And if we have to hire people to do that, we will do that as well. Okay. And so what's. I, I would, I would just caution yeah. to make it more complicated by bringing in high-level attorneys to try to, to yeah. try to supersede the whatever. I mean, I think in terms of a regional health trust, a self-funded health trust, well, I, I think the advice coming from our consultants will be, will be okay. very good. Well, important. once they get to where they're giving you, yeah. the, you get the cheat sheets and they get it down, then we'll have we'll talk to you folks and have maybe have them come in and give us the presentation. I, okay. I kind of think I just wanted to come in and flash the floodlights on yes. the problem for you and okay. let you guys all know it's right. coming or see if you have questions that you've heard or mm -hmm. things, you know, maybe you can just submit them to me and okay. I can try to get the answers and at least have a direction of what everyone's concerns are. 
as far Sounds as good. Uh, eventually through the chair, our attorneys will be have to be will have to be brought up to speed, correct? I, I would think so. So to make would sure it that make sense to kind of have them trotting along with the consultants to so that they're understanding? Since they're going to have to anyway. I I think you know the what? attorneys you know. we may be better off coming up with a plan and then presenting it to mm -hmm. them and letting them say where they think the holes are or where the gaps might be rather than like paying plan. them an hourly rate absolutely to, okay to babysit while we go while we get there gotcha and if we come up with something and they say mm -hmm. you know you missed the whole boat on this aspect mm -hmm. there's just that aspect they're working on instead mm -hmm. of the five or six aspects mm -hmm. okay. yeah. through the chair mm -hmm. in 2016 is that going to change you think that's you, you don't know you don't know that's the big anything that's could right change yeah, yeah, are, yeah are they going to be insuring kids mm -hmm. till the 26 in 2016 yeah. <laughs> i don't know like, i sort of get what something garvey's talking about is when we have a new president yes is, i got is that this whole, <laughs> this whole plan going to be flushed for lack of a better word so i think you know. the general theory is is that it will already have gone through the trial it will gone through an, an an actual cycle mm -hmm. and people will already be in place and I think the general assumption, I mean, have you heard otherwise? But once it's in place, they're probably not going to necessarily no, be just a matter of common sense. Yeah. Think, think mm -hmm. okay. If it were, you know, if it was, this was the, the sample year and it was next year that they were changing? Be a little different. Possibly. Yeah. But okay. it's not. But so. So. Very good. Anyways, Thank any you. questions? You guys all know where to find me. Yes. Most yes. of the time. Yes. <laughs> You can run, but you can't hide. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our agenda is our police chief. Who's socializing with that guy? Sir? You are here in a couple items. Um, the first one, we all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk first there. We all had the pleasure of attending um, a few Thursdays ago. You were installed as the head of the Mass Chiefs of Police Association, which is a great honor for you. I know you've worked your way up the proverbial ladder because I remember your little pens when you were running for treasurer. But anyways, um, it, was, it was a great event. Uh, there were a lot of people here from lo both locally and from the state and a lot of the police officers were there and uh, I had the pleasure of speaking and it was just uh, you know, it's a feathering like I said with Carolyn's feathering your cap and also the towns because you're an employee of ours and, uh, and we're very happy for you and you feel free to elaborate on on what exactly your duties will be as major headache no, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's I what Slug and Thorpe has right now so <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk <slightly. laughs> the uh, no, I, I thank you all for your presence there. It meant a lot to me as well, and members of my department and other officials from town. Um, a lot of activities going on, mm -hmm. trying to get a lot of answers to a lot of questions that are we're seeing in the media throughout the country, uh, the unrest in major cities, the protesting, mm -hmm. and we're just trying to get our arms around to what it is, what the major problem is. We can see the demonstrations, but even the governor said this weekend we're trying to get a handle on what the demonstration's about, what, what changes are we trying to address and resolve. Uh, we continue to look at continual training within my own department here in town, mm -hmm. as well as throughout the state and throughout the country, and uh, other aspects of um, safer means to try to defuse situations, uh, looking at equipment, I'll be coming back to the board probably sometime during this year to look at uh, alternative weapons uh, such as tasers versus uh, resorting to a firearm. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been studies where in, in some cases uh, once they see that light get activated on the taser before it's discharged it just kind of calms everybody down and mm -hmm. there's been some that have been tased in the past and mm -hmm. they don't like that feeling. Mm -hmm. um, so. It's not our job to go to work to harm people. It's right. our job to go to work and try to resolve disputes, mm -hmm. uh, keep the peace, and mm -hmm. protect the lives and property. So that's to be caveat. That's a lot. A lot of things to do. And like I said, there's 350 some odd police chiefs and departments throughout the Commonwealth, uh, and it was nice to see that many, many were present for that mm -hmm. event as well. But again, I thank you for your support and look 
forward. I can't wait to December. <laughs> so, I'm so busy already. I have only that. Through the chair. Mm -hmm. What are we doing to protect the officers, Chief? Are we doing anything to, to help them protect themselves against what's going on? Because after watching TV about New York, you know, the only good cop to dead cop, that ain't too good either. Yeah, exactly. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. There's got to be a balance in there somewhere. Yeah. And, and um, training is a key. Training is an expense as well. Mm -hmm. And if we can uh, protect our officers to the, to the level that uh, we expect, um, there's different events that happen in our community versus in a, an urban area. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know the big hue and cry during the Boston Marathon, and I allude to a couple of emails that I received from other chiefs earlier today, um, where the people were proud and happy to see the uh, armored vehicles arrive at the Boston Marathon bombing yeah. and the house-by-house -house search that they, that they under, undertook during those days immediately after the marathon. Mm -hmm. And now only to have it turned back, why do you have those vehicles? You need those vehicles. You know, those are a means, and that's it's, it's not a cost for a municipality to get those equipment. A lot of them are surplus oh. equipment that's out there that they give back to the communities for us to use and to use. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in Long Meadow, we used to get uh, um, the four-wheel drive, and we left them camouflage, painted because they were mer military surplus vehicles. Mm -hmm. But in, instead of putting a thirty-seven thousand dollar cruiser on a snowstorm we would use a four-wheel drive vehicle like that that you know it might slide off the road it might get banged up mm -hmm. but it's not going to knock the cruiser off mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you can equip it to some degree to guys have portable radios it's not replacing the vehicle it's something to use in an emergency situation mm -hmm. so there there are advantages to having some of that surplus yeah. equipment you know chief you talked about that taser i mean you know my kids are cop and they use tasers all the time down in hartford mm -hmm. but that taser doesn't necessarily down someone no, because if they're drugged up, they right. might as well you know, use a squirt gun. It's drugged as well as, well as a, a mental instability. I had a, a very good friend of mine in New York. He was uh, stabbed. They missed a carotid in his neck and they missed it in his back. Mm. And unfortunately, they had to shoot that person to, to take him out. The tasers, they hit him twice with a taser. Mm -hmm. Had no effect at all. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's you, you hope again yeah, you know it does come to 44 it. years I haven't had to fire my weapon yeah right. and I hope that you know no one has to That's but yeah. it, it, it's there as the a mm -hmm. it's there yeah. if you need it through the chair are you, uh, <laughs> through the chair chief are we thinking about um, any cameras I've, there's been a lot of talk about cameras on um, the police body, body cameras yeah. to police to protect the police from frivolous mm -hmm. um, Acts that are, you know, people saying that this, this, and this happened, and really, it's not happening the way that it's being said. It's something to I'm look at. Sides. I mean, I, I think you know. There's but still I don't think we have that problem. But no, but I think there's still a lot of research that needs to be done. I, mm -hmm. I know uh, the big costs, and one of the chiefs had done the math on what the president had proposed, mm -hmm. and based on the number of law enforcement officers and the number that he had authorized that should be furnished, one in nine officers would have a camera. Oh. And with the way things go, that ninth guy would be on vacation mm -hmm. for a week, and the mm -hmm. camera would be missing. Yeah. But um, we have issues with storage, okay. the retention period of time. How long do we have to keep that video if yeah. it's nothing? Mm -hmm. And you know, check with Ryan with IT. Storage is a big factor, mm -hmm. and the retrieval. Mm -hmm. And if something mm -hmm. happens, yeah. okay, did you do it on purpose? Did you delete that camera? Mm -hmm. How come your camera was the only one that broke? Yeah. You know, the proverbial blank yeah. happens sometimes, and. Uh, mm -hmm. You try to do the best you can to ensure it doesn't, okay. and and they are. I, I recall when 911 system first came in and the phone calls were all uh, recorded, mm -hmm. and there was fear on the officers that someone's going to misinterpret what I, I said. Yeah. They're going to, you know, and we had some issues with the clock here was three minutes off than the clock there. So mm -hmm. now 911 went through and made all like an atomic clock. Everybody's mm -hmm. times the same, see. but. I used to do the tapes in Long Meadow when I was a sergeant out there. Mm -hmm. Those tapes really um, found in favor of the officer 99% mm -hmm. of the times. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. all of it. it just seemed like, and it does. Mm -hmm. When you're in an emergency situation, that clock seems like it's I one see. second seems yep. like 10 minutes. Yep. Yeah, you know? you're absolutely and, and right. It's not. Especially so. when your loved one needs help, it's right. like.
Absolutely. Why aren't you here yesterday? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. If, if I could just jump in, I, I took a point from Corinne when she was talking to you folks. I had failed. I went through my paperwork here. We had had a uh, EMS call at the Masonic Hall, and I had written a letter to the citizen that had stepped up and helped us, a Mr. Goslin, and thanked him for his services and rendering aid. But what I failed to do, and I have copies here for the board members, the officers involved, uh, elderly gentlemen had, uh, elderly, I gotta be careful with that term, it's gonna get me in trouble too. Um, an older person had suffered a heart attack and for all intents and purposes was dead on the floor. Uh, the officers were called, they responded, they administer the defib device, which results in an ch electrical charge into the person. Mm -hmm. And there's one of the copies there. And in checking my records, I had never acknowledged the officers that were involved. That's oh, just okay. a letter to them today, uh, apologizing in my delay. The letter had gone out to the to the citizen that had helped that night. But uh, these these officers had used our physio control defib device that we have in the cruisers. Mm -hmm. And I think the schools have them throughout the area and some other public buildings as well. Mm -hmm. um, they brought this guy back. He was laughing and joking with him on a stretcher wow. going out of the hall. Oh, He's alive nice. today. Amen. Um, so mm -hmm. these these are the things that these guys are running into. Mm -hmm. These officers yeah. are coming across. And, and, and again, the, the training, the equipment that we have, mm -hmm. you know, we're saving lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I just want to share that with mm -hmm. you. Know, yeah. Like I had said, I think I had sent a copy down. Yeah. To the letter I sent to Mr. Uh, Goslin for his okay. his help mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, oh, go ahead. Chair, what kind of time do some of these officers have? They all got a lot of years on the floor. Uh, actually, Mike Souza's I think he's three years. Dan Atwater's probably nine. Scott Scala, Scala, yeah, speak English. Scott Scala is over, well over twenty, and Steve Mannon's probably around the twenty mark, twenty year mark. Yes. So they get trained periodically for this. We do this. Uh, they do CPR refresher, I think, every two years. Mm -hmm. So they get that. Certification. Paul, is that correct? C refresher two years? I think it's C uh, CPR and AV is annually. Annually, okay. Yeah. okay. All right, great. Is, is there a difference between refresher and recertification? It's the same thing. Same, same thing, same. okay. Um, Michael Healy's graduating from STCC at the uh, Police Academy. January 23rd. I'm waiting for the invitation. I'll send it down to the board. That's the first day of the MMA conference. That's at 10 a.m. at Springfield well, Central High School. It's a Friday, right? Yes. At Springfield Central High School? At 10 a.m. at the Springfield Central High School. As oh, soon as so I get the invitation, I'll forward right it down after. to the board. Yeah, with that, you miss half the day. No, you wouldn't. Okay, think about it. All right. That's 10 in the morning? Ten, yes. How long do they usually last? Two, two, two hours. hours. Yeah. All right, now, Nick, the next two items, are they both executive? I know one of them is, obviously. As far as, yes, as far as I know, they would both be. Okay. Um, one with respect to strategy, with respect to negotiations, uh, yeah, negotiations. negotiations collective bargaining, yeah. and the other with, um, I believe it would fall under the uh, potential uh, litigation. Okay. All right. So your other two items, unfortunately, you'll have to hang around for. Okay. Right. The good news is it's a short agenda. Yes. And we'll try to motor, we'll try to motor our way through the rest. Of the right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I guess we'll, 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 we'll be taking it again. again later. Next, we got our fire chief. Paul Morris. Uh, getting the work out. Okay. Getting the ashes. Fire chief. And you are here for four items, once again, two of which, as we just determined, are executive session. So yep. um, the first item is firefighter events. Firefighter events. Um, we have two graduations this week. Uh, tomorrow evening is the call firefighters, the four new call firefighters going through the Mass Fire Academies program uh, are finishing up their six month long program. And they, they've all uh, exceeded and, and graduated. Uh, it's a very difficult time-consuming process and you know I'm kind of excited for them. Um, so the graduation is tomorrow night in East Hampton 
and um, from there they come back. They have about a month and a half or so of in-house that starts the first week in January during, the, during our regular drill sessions. Uh, with at some point, I'll send a letter to the board letting you know that they are, they'll officially be on uh, as probationary firefighters at that point, probably okay. either February 1st or middle middle to end of February, okay. depending on how they're how the in-house training goes. Four of them. Four of them, yeah. yeah. The other, and the other one is uh, Mike Minahan's finishing up his nine-week uh, full-time academy on Friday, graduation, um, and Mike will be back in-house on uh, Monday, uh, rounding out the complement of seven. And that's in Stowe? That's in Stowe, yep. <coughs> All right. Um, second item is executive. The third item, <coughs> you, want, you have a request to, um, to give us a little... Um, a little presentation. presentation um, I, I went through it with uh, Select Woman Thorpe. Uh, a brief. Uh, she went. Through, she saw my draft. Uh, as my liaison, she came in. We were discussing a few things, and and it, one it kind of segued right into it. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, my my budget. It's it's submitted for your folks' approval right now. Um, before we submit it to appropriations, and um, I, what I'm trying to do is increase the staff by one, increase our hours operation. It's a big, it's a big decision for the department. It's a big decision for the town, um, and I'd like to make sure that any possible information, any possible questions that might be, is out there. So I have a presentation that's um, tailored to why I, you know, think this decision should be made, mm -hmm. and I'd like for the board to see the see the presentation. Sure. And actually, I think if I give the PowerPoint to Don Mackey, he that can actually end up oh, in yeah on the, on LCAT. Okay. Um, with the board's approval beforehand or you know that evening after after the meeting um, and I think the taxpayers you know it would be some great information for the taxpayers to know right. what you know what we're planning for the fire department you know yep. it's a lot of information it's been discussed for a number of years so it's, it's been discussed and it's yeah. been talked about and, yeah you know okay so um, since Selectman Thorpe, since you've seen it and you know you've already not seen it, but you've got an overview. I saw, I saw the, Did rough, you? Yeah, the okay. rough draft. Yeah. The rough draft. Yeah. That was the guinea pig. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it up. To, I'll leave it up to you as to whether. I mean, I have no problem with them putting it on like LCAP before because you're you're looking at the 29th. The 29th meeting, right? Okay, mm -hmm. um, I have no problem with, but I'll leave it up to you as far as. Well. I mean, uh, you know, you run the risk of it's probably self-explanatory, but if, if somebody has if somebody fine. ends up with a negative view because they see it before you explain, you explain it, it, then that yeah, could be. Yeah, we can, yeah. Have, we could wait. Okay. I think you should wait okay. until the 29th. That's yep. fine. And, That's fine. And you get to put your final polish on it. Right. Okay. You know, you, like I said, there's some stuff. Yeah, yeah, there was. Yep. Right. Not much, though. Right. There was yep. Yep. All right. So we will look forward to having you in on the 29th to ah. give us uh, that proposal. Excellent. I appreciate that. All righty. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind also nope, not a problem. taking a seat in the chief section. We'll, uh, <laughs> the chief we'll section. We'll get back. Not chief. <laughs> not chief. <laughs> chief. <laughs> yeah, the chief, chief seats. seats. <laughs> not the chief seats. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, next item, we are going to, for the probably the last time, we're going to table yep. the approval of the minutes yeah. of July 22nd until the next yeah. meeting. Uh, under all business, uh, budgets. Today was the day that the, the department heads were supposed to present us with their budgets. Nick, you know, going to give me an update on that? Just wanted the board to acknowledge that you have them. Uh, they were in your mailboxes in the office. Uh, if you don't, I, I think uh, maybe your select and Federici is uh, right out, still well, be there. I sent account, them to yeah. you electronically. They're also on the Google oh. Drive. Okay. So if it's more convenient, to, yeah. okay. If you know, if you don't yeah. seem to have them in the emails or mm -hmm. whatnot, please yeah. let me know. I'll get okay. them out again. Okay, great. And we'll review those. And obviously on the 29th. We'll come back, and if there's any questions we have of any board members, we might let me know of any department heads. What we might want to do, um, if it's if it works with the board, is if you have any questions with your liaison assignments, mm -hmm. you can get in touch with them before the 29th, and right. hopefully have it resolved by the time we get to the meeting of the 29th. Right. Because obviously the next week you have to present them to appropriations on the 6th. So um, also the mm -hmm. other, if even if you're not the liaison and you have questions, true, you yeah, try definitely, it. yeah. Get yep. that taken care of too. Yeah, as long as everyone's satisfied with right. what we're submitting before we submit them. So great. And the next item is the capital plan priority list. I know we're sort of <laughs> pushing that off a bit. Could, could I um, uh, my guest. Yeah, like to just explain to the board, there are a few things. If, mm -hmm. 
Well, um, there's been some meetings uh, in the meantime since the last time I spoke with the board last week about uh, the expansion of a list and some of these other components and how will it work. And there's a memo, and I left all of that in there in the rescan today. Uh, I received an email from uh, Mr. Carabetta uh, later today, and he the, the long and the short of it is what uh, Capital really is looking for is for the board to prioritize those four that it had already uh, that are directly under its authority. Mm -hmm. So the two pr uh, projects, the Summers Road Landfill and the Town Hall uh, Renovation Project as a whole, that endorsement, those endorsements to the Capital Planning Committee now appear uh, to be uh, satisfactory with the committee. They wouldn't expect you to rank them, nor any of these other projects that were part of a longer list you saw last week. Mm -hmm. What they're asking for the board to do is to provide a priority list of the four the IT maintenance the police cruisers the recreation department vehicle and the clerk uh, document imaging uh, for okay. them to consider okay if it's um, if it's really if the board approves we can come back with that on the 29th that's fine okay okay what were those four department vehicle landfill can through the chair can yep. I ask who this is from who's this I think that's uh, Mr. Carabetta Although I think he just, I'm guessing because I think he just shortened his last name for purposes of the email. The um, RM Kara, okay. I assume is. Is that one that I've circled and wrote on the top of? Mm -hmm. Yes. That is from Mr. Carabetta. Okay. All right. So we'll do that. Um, I think there's well, another, I think there yeah. may be another email in there with this well, shorter, a shorter list. Um, yeah, the first one. Yeah, it was the. Recreation vehicle and equal his. Landfill? No, the landfill we don't have to do. It was, um, was it Nicholas? The right, the this was part of the, the rescan. So the right. package that you were given this evening when you came in, the, there's one new email that came in this afternoon from Mr. Carabetta. Okay. That yeah. makes the list the original four. I'll have to get that. I, that that one. one, yeah. Uh, Bill? Slack McGorman? Bill? Yeah. This one. Yeah, it's the IT maintenance, the police cruisers, oh, yeah. the rec vehicle, and then document imaging. So, all right. All right. Uh, next item is the casino, the baseline study agreement, and the mitigation committee. And um, since you've been patiently waiting, Frank, um, I'll have attorney Frank Fitzgerald come up. Um, they're actually uh, your corporate counsel for MGM. Yes, thank you. And thank you. Uh, for are you, sir? Getting us on the agenda. I haven't met you before, Mr. Oh, Gorman. Nice to meet you. And uh, thank you for getting us on the agenda on such short notice uh, for this matter. No problem. And uh, if you can proceed. If you, uh, if you just want me to give you a little summary of what. Sure. Uh, well, as you know, we have a surrounding community agreement with MGM. Uh, my name is Frank Fitzgerald. I'm local counsel for them. I'm fortunate to have an office at 46 Center Square in East Meadow, Massachusetts, and enjoy it very much there. Um, we have a surrounding a community agreement with MGM that uh, basically provides for what they call a look-back study, as you all well know. And the look-back study uh, contemplates that in order to have a good look-back, you need a baseline. So there's a provision in the agreement that requires MGM to select a study group or a consulting group that will do the baseline study. In other words, find what the current status of all the economics concerned are traffic, uh, business uh, detail, and otherwise now to be then taking another look at that 15 months after the casino opens up, which is probably four years from now. Mm -hmm. But the baseline study has to be done now, within the next 90 days, and there's a little bit, because of the delays with the, we had a referendum, as you yes. might recall, uh, and change and those kinds of things. Because of those delays, now there's a little bit of pressure to get the thing done because there's a couple of events happening in the future. Number one is construction will start on the casino, and number two, there's a viaduct pro project going on on Route 91 that mm. we want to get the study done before then. So MGM, as part of their requirements under the agreement, has selected and proposing a group to the surrounding communities called Civic Economics, and I think you've got their... CVs. I don't know if you've got it, Mr. Gorman. Did you? I actually just gave him the, yeah. the handout that they. Okay, I have one here. If you, if you, if you have the okay, that's the same one, yeah. yeah. And they selected this group contemplating that 
it w had to be a group that the towns would be accept amenable to or acceptable to because the towns, the f six surrounding communities have the ability to approve. So mm -hmm. we need four out of the five or out of the six yep. to approve it. And uh, so uh, some of the select board people have had an opportunity to meet with the uh, civic economics group. We've met with them. I've spent probably six or seven meetings with them. I get the impression that they're data-driven, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, they really, uh, they haven't represented, the reason they were selected is they have never represented gaming companies before. They've always worked for cities and towns. So they come up uh, with an independent and biased uh, look. So what we need for, from the board is an approval of that selection of that group to move the process forward. And the second part of that is, before we go into that, is there's a traffic study that goes along with the baseline study. And MGM is suggesting that this traffic study be done by TEC. Um, uh, the TEC has been MGM's traffic consultant in the past. And MGM understands that that may be raise some red flags with, with people that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because they've worked for MGM, but would like the board and the towns and cities to c consider using them for economic reasons. One, mm -hmm. they've got all the data. Number two, uh, they have the respect of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and the agreement provides that the planning, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission supervise their work. And number three is, for purposes of a baseline study, there's not a lot of opinion required. Mm -hmm. It's just basically counting. In other words, how, what's there? Right. So it's not a lot. Of, uh, it's not like a developer coming in and saying, "Don't worry about this. Walmart's not going to give you a big problem." It's, it's, it's just the, the counting, and that that count is then analyzed by the civic economics group, mm -hmm. and therefore, and then they, as part of their job, uh, to develop the baseline study, will come go to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, get the data, get whatever data is available in the aggregate, mm -hmm. and then come and meet with, for instance, the chiefs uh, and, and all the D and the DPW people and get specific data with respect to East Long Meadow mm -hmm. so that uh, that can be addressed in the, in the uh, look back studies. So that's where we are. Okay, and one thing just to fill you in, Bill, um, when Selectman Thorpe and I went last Friday and we actually met the two gentlemen from this company and we, we were very impressed with them. They, they you know, uh, they know what they're doing. They, they have a good plan. But what we suggested or what we talked about and they liked the idea of is obviously uh, Mike Albano did a study for the town and it was quite an extensive study. So they were actually suggesting that if they could get a copy of that, they could, you know, there's a lot of baseline information in there already that they could use to start their, um, you know, start their process. So if we, if we should go with them, um, then that's you know, we'd ask Nick to provide a copy of that to them. Um, and they need four out of six communities, I believe? Cause, yeah. Because West Springfield four. and Aguam and Longmeadow are not involved, right? No, West Springfield's involved. Okay. Uh, Longmeadow and Hoyle aren't involved. Oh, that's what it was. Okay, yeah, I'm right, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and two of them have already said, basically said yes, I believe, right? Yes, West Springfield. Yeah, three have already Yeah, three? Yes. Okay. They said yes. And the only Four. community we haven't met with is Chicopee, we're meeting, because the mayor was out of town, and we're meeting with him tomorrow. Okay. But the civic guys, one's in Austin and one's in Chicago, as yeah. you found out, they, they're not around right now. So. Okay. All right. So they've met with their boards and actually taken a vote already? Is that what uh, Wilbur Hampton took a vote last night. Okay. And Ludlow, I believe, Ludlow has taken a vote. And Ludlow actually delegated the responsibility of, of reviewing the final proposal mm -hmm. to one of their members, okay. which you, which would be, I would suggest that maybe be appropriate here. So uh, we have to move it along, if you right. don't mind, but it would be appropriate if you did vote to approve civic economics that someone be delegated to review the final proposal so mm -hmm. that you're satisfied with it. Okay. We're not trying to push anything on right the right process here we yeah. just, just but it's timely to get it done mm -hmm. okay um, any other questions um, just to mention that our, our, our department heads have been meeting um, had been meeting regularly so they should be ready to have provide their input and as I, well yeah and they and they like that idea obviously mm -hmm. of meeting with yeah because mm -hmm. we're trying to figure out who to meet with and obviously department heads are going to be the ones who know who know the flow of the, of the town you know exactly. they're in various manner so um, we only pulled back um, through the chair um, when the whole okay. thing came up and so they'll start meeting again right on the way through. any questions nope. okay um, so you're looking for something 
soon, like like as soon as possible. Yeah, uh, it, it, I mean, in a perfect not, world, it would be it's up to the board. It's right, not up right. to me, but I think I think it would be good if we to move the process along because mm -hmm. these guys will start the study mm -hmm. first week in January and they have 90 days to get it. They have 90 days from the licensing to get it done according to our agreement. Mm -hmm. It's November yeah, 7th. If you're, if you're okay with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and, and I, my suggestion would be that if you do want to approve them that you caveat it with the suggestion that one of the board or somebody has the ability to take a, f a final look at the, the okay. detailed proposal that they will submit at the end of this week. Okay. And since we, uh, do you have any more further questions or concerns? I'll leave that to the pleasure of the chair. Okay, because um, you know we, like I said, we had met with we had met with the gentleman, and uh, speaking for myself, I was confident in their abilities, and uh, I think you know obviously in an effort to move it forward. Um, I guess we'll, I'll make a motion to approve. Was it civic engine? C civic economics. Civic economics. As the as the independent group to do the look back study for MGM Casinos on behalf, it, basically on behalf of Town of Salt Meadow, because we can't, um, and we will leave it up to a discussion of the board at some relatively soon future point to determine who will be. Uh, but we do want to have someone be in charge of reviewing the final agreement before um, before it's it's basically finalized. So could you uh, could you um, just to be. More specific, I think. I, I wasn't purposely the, vague. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps the motion should include the uh, assent to the use of tech for the traffic study. Oh, okay. Well. I'm sorry. And yeah. also, as part of the motion to uh, to include the use of tech as as the as the group to do the traffic study with the uh, under the sort of the purview of the Pioneer Valley Planning Thank you. Commission. Okay. So moved. Is there a second? second. Any discussion? Yeah, um, I, I do have concerns with using uh, tech uh, with the traffic study, but I do remember that. Both studies did come up with a similar number, mm -hmm. and so the, I, I'm appeased with that, but I just would have hoped that they would have found a, a different um, traffic plate person to do that. But it's it's not a deal breaker for me. Mm -hmm. But I Good. did want to go on record Appreciate to say that. Appreciate your comment. Yeah. I think that's appropriate. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. um, any further comments? Nope. All in favor? Uh, All right. There you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for the explanation. Always nice to be here. <laughs> Good meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The next item is a notice from the MSBA, and if I don't know if you want to. Since you, oops, I'm sorry. Rather, uh, there was one additional piece of business with the. Oh, I'm sorry. The mitigation committee. I'm sorry. If you want to. It's uh, my understanding. That, well, there's information presented here to the board uh, for consideration that there's uh, under the provisions of the gaming law. Uh, that regional uh, mitigation committees are uh, assigned. That would include uh, the host and the surrounding communities. And the basic ask here is for each community uh, to consider making a liaison to that committee. So I don't know that the board needs to make that decision this evening, um, but it is certainly one that is coming up. Should do it. Uh, and that after. Yeah. We can make that same. I was thinking through the chair, I was thinking mm -hmm. we could do that one as well as the same time. Same as time. We do the, okay, that's fine. Yeah, because. And then we know a little more about it. All too. right. Sounds good. good. Mr. Would Chairman. You, uh, uh, yeah, probably or even the 6th of, Jan uh, of January. It was say June. That, that was my question is, um, I don't know when Mr. Fitzgerald would be sending in that contract for review or that agreement. Okay. Uh, Frank, I'm sorry, before you leave. Do you know when the review, the contract would be back for review before the final? You know, in other words, if we had, if we appointed someone, when would that? Uh, I think we'll have it the, by the. I hope we have it by the end of this week. Oh, okay. So that the proposal, I mean, you're talking about the proposal. Mm -hmm. It should be here by the end of this week. Okay. I'll get it here right away. All right, great. So you can take a look at it, and maybe you can take a look at it together. So. All right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, um, no, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, we probably a good idea at, at this point. We can just individually take a look at yeah. it and see if there's any any because uh, we're not going to be meeting before. They probably want to have some sort of okay on. It, so. All right, next is notice from MSBA, and I don't know if you want to handle it being a former school committee person or if you. Oh well, well, um, we did get a notice 
um, stating that um, the East La Meadow High School was not going to be part of their study with getting the reimbursements. So we are eligible to apply again. I don't know, do you want the letter read right into record or I don't know. Um, does it need to be? You know, you might as well yeah. since it's, uh, it's if you, you got it. Um, as the town of East La Meadow FYI 2004 SOI status, the Massachusetts uh, School Building Authority, known as the MSBA, would like to thank the town of East La Meadow, the district, for expressing an interest in the MSBA program for school building construction, renovation, and repair grants through the fiscal year 2014 statement of interest process. Overall, the MSBA received 108 statements of interest from 72 different school districts for consideration in fiscal year 2014. In reviewing the SOIs, which is the statement of interest, the MSBA identifies the school facilities that have the greatest and the most urgent need based on an assessment of the entire cohort of SO SOIs that are received for consideration each fiscal year. Through the, though the MSBA, excuse me, through the MSBA's due diligence process and review of the 201 FYI, 200, FYI 2014 SOIs that were received, the MSBA has determined that East La Middle High School SOI will not be in, invited into the MSBA eligibility period at this time. If the district would like the school to be considered for future collaborations with the MSBA, the district should file an SOA in the upcoming fiscal year. The MSBA will be accepting SOIs for consideration in the FYI 2015 starting January 9, 2015. There will be some minor changes to the FYI 2015 SOI process with information to follow. If your district is planning on submitting an SOI in 2015, you may want to identify your school committee and other local governing boards of your intentions, as both governing bodies will vote to approve submission of the SOI prior to the following closing date. The SOI closing date for districts submitting under the Accelerated Repair Program, which is primarily for repair and or replacement of windows, roofs, or or and boilers and otherwise structurally sound facility will be February 13, 2015. The SOI closing date for districts submitting under the core program, which is primarily for projects beyond the scope of the accelerated repair, including extensive repairs, renovations, additions, renovations, and new school construction will be April 10, 2015. The MSBA remains committed to collaborating and partnering with the Town of East Longmeadow to better understand any other school facility issues in the district and will be sending more detailed information regarding the FYI 2015 SOI process to districts in the coming weeks. Feel free to contact, and then they have a contact person, and that's signed uh, John K. McCarthy, Executive Director. A copy has been sent to our legislative delegation, uh, to um, the chair of the East Lamento School Committee and our superintendent. Thank you. That's unfortunate. But um, I'll check with um, our superintendent and see what, and um, the chair of the school committee, mm -hmm. and see what their next steps will be. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> next item is, um, there's been, a, I believe, a, a new El East Lamento Cable Access policy written and um, this is a first read That's for all of us. First read, right? Yeah. So and, and the yeah, and the part of this. and the um, original one will be coming to you and uh, that'll be they'll be looking for our approval on that. Okay. All right. Uh, next item is a request from the Masonic Temple for a one day liquor license. Saturday, January tenth, two thousand fifteen I believe. Um, from five PM to ten PM and also Saturday, January 24th, 2015, from 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. Uh, there's entertainment for both events, their birthday parties, and the functions will take place 
at 43 Chestnut Street and insurance is on file. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the one day liquor license for, can we, can we do both days at once, Nick, I believe? Okay, for both Saturday, January 10th and Saturday, January 24th for the times indicated. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? No. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Uh, and also for uh, the entertainment license for both events. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, next item is Pizza Shop. They have a request to add a new auto amusement device, an electronic dartboard. It was viewed by the police department and they approved it contingent on our approval. So I'll make a motion to approve the electronic dartboard for um, the pizza shop. So moved. Is there a second? second? Any discussion? Yeah. I didn't see the information with regards to this. I'm assuming it's just there's no actual darts. I don't believe so. Do you have I any think more it's, uh, information on that? I don't think it's actually. And we have a a we have sort of a picture. <laughs> <It's Yeah. laughs> but, uh, can, can I ask the chief, um, Chief Mellis? Yes. Um, it says that uh, you guys looked at that. Officer Corey looked at that. I Okay. Any more information? What? Um, why is it that they need an approval from us for a dartboard? I believe it's an uh, amusement device. Is Automatic a, amusement device. Yeah, when they need a, it, that add, oh, okay. adds to a new license, adds yeah. for a new license. I'm good. Yeah. All right. Um, any further discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Now Board of Health. No, that's right. It should be right before that. Um, we actually here you go. I'll give you that. I'm gonna forget that. Um, Republic Service Community Funds. Um, we asked the board to see where we want to divide this money, and I talked to some people at the school at the greenhouse. Uh, a, the environmental science class in conjunction with the environmental club is in need of funds to repair the school greenhouse. Uh, what they did, I went down there, they sent me these pictures of the greenhouse deteriorating and they got a professional uh, person to come up to see what the cost would be or what they would like to get and that to replace two windows was $300. Um, <coughs> The heat and pipes repair was six hundred to a thousand dollars. Exhaust fan installed was five hundred. Um, I recommend you file for a grant with the MDAR for a sh shade cloth system for heat retention at night. This was by Graziano Garden, so they need anywhere be you know a couple thousand dollars they're asking for. If we can swing any of that money their way, and uh, these are the pictures. Mm -hmm. And also, we got one request from um, Terry Hellyer passed along uh, for a soldier's project. It's uh, the key club at the high school. They're, they're asking only for $100 uh, that they reimburse their students for contributions, uh, as well as uh, keep money in account for some other projects. So those are the two that I you know, sent me things back, but I also have uh, from Selectman Thorpe uh, for Veterans PA system, which uh, during the Veterans Parade was quite terrible when we were at the parade because the thing kept cutting out and uh, they need uh, money not to exceed $2,000. And then we uh, both agreed on scholarships, uh, five selectmen scholarships, uh, one grant scholarship for $1,000 and four scholarships for $250, which comes to $1,000. Uh, there are a few other things. Uh, I don't know, they got dress uniforms, police color guard, but don't the uh, police officers get uh, allowance for their? You get a clothing allowance, but just most for, departments when they hire 
Yeah. Yeah. Officer, they don't use it for this. They have a standard uniform that they give, and since I've been here, that's never been accommodated for their monies. All right. Or yeah. And uh, through the chair, there are some adjustments to that. Um, I, uh, through the chair, there were some adjustments to that cost. Okay. Um, um, when we actually spoke with one of the uh, dealers uh, that actually does the uniforms and kind of gave us a full outfitted price, so that can be updated too. And I need to have a conversation with our chief. Mm -hmm. And uh, the key club, I think, is kind of important because we have. Uh, seven uh, boys from East Lawn Meadow that got activated. And I think helping the key club, I think we could do a little better than $100 for them because they send care packages and uh, they're also looking for when they get back because they eat in the desert every day uh, to get them some uh, movie tickets and gifts to eat in establishments because they're gonna delay their Christmas for when they come back and I think we should support these guys for what they're doing for us over there. So I'd be, I think it'd be a good gesture to uh, work with the key club a little more to try to help out a little more. And uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you want to do these, Angela, but. Um, I, I did them in the last meeting. So do you, do you need to do them over again? Yeah, I get these here. Well, yeah, yeah, I think we, I don't know the, the ones that, I think you only have to do the ones there you're in favor of so and I think I don't know if Don wants yeah, to yeah. Um, with respect to the sound system yeah. um, I spoke because we're tape we take those events mm -hmm. Memorial Day and Veterans Day and that's been an issue Memorial Day in the past JP will use his sound system mm -hmm. um, don't think we used it this time because he wasn't in town he was away from Memorial Weekend I subsequently had a conversation with Colin, um, and we looked at a system uh, put up by Fender. And Colin's prepared to purchase one for the department because they would use it at sporting events, and either one of us, if we bought it as equipment for our department, would mm -hmm. make it available for those events for the veterans because. Yeah. I think it would be nice, I, and I appreciate through the chair. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the Thank effort, you. but I really think that it's something that they should have their own. Um, it was truly an embarrassing moment um, yeah. Yeah. Um, being there, and and um, this PA system perhaps will be used throughout. So I mean, I don't. Are you saying that you want an additional one as well? No, 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 no. no. Oh, We're okay. just offering to provide it. Okay, got it. And okay. so, if there was a question about how to make use of these community funds, mm -hmm. um, the price that for the one I think that we were pricing that would accommodate the need for but, the town mm -hmm. was, I think, six ninety nine. Right, so but that that, that PA that system is not just is not just the PA system, it's also the microphones, it's also the CD uh, tape player that I noticed that they were using, and also the speakers. So it's not just, it's a full inclusive we, PA system. I guess what you're asking is what's included in that, right? For the That's what I'm saying. I yeah. just, all I wanted to do was oh, make yeah. you aware, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, because I think Colin may be prepared to purchase one anyway. Okay. But we can have that so conversation with him. I mean, because certainly we want to use get the boats bang for the buck. Correct. But we definitely we, do, we, do, we, do, we definitely don't want to give it back to them um, to the people to because uh, we've earned it to and Republic, so we, yeah. to the Republican. And if we don't spend it, then um, it'll be our loss. And I think our veterans have done more than enough for for mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. as our country so mm -hmm. i don't but I don't it's an option i, I don't agree. disagree i I'm think it's yeah great use of yeah, it's really fun. Yep. they need it so we can but look into it okay. and yeah, get back to them yeah okay yeah, you're the chair so you can propose that so. yeah I, I think what we should do is uh between the three of us look this over and make a decision on how we want to spend the money mm -hmm. And maybe come up with a decision the 29th. Okay. You know, I want to thank Mr. Mackey for well, that sure, information. Yeah, I just want to make you aware. Of yeah, so we don't spend the money right. twice. You know? right. Mr. Right, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
uh, through the chairman, if I could just say, just doing a quick tally, I, I don't know what's on the page there, but depending, so just a quick recap, if I could, to make sure I have mm -hmm. what the board's thinking, talking about right now. Um, so perhaps something for the greenhouse, um, to two, three thousand dollars, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so if that's three, then the key club, a hundred dollars for the moment. Um, then uh, a PA system at two thousand, mm -hmm. uh, two thousand dollars in scholarships, mm -hmm. and if you include the uniforms, mm -hmm. was that fifteen hundred? Actually, it, it's going to be more um, than the um, than, than the original thought. We originally thought because there's, um, I guess there's certain uh, specifications that okay. have to be met, and so that was a little bit more. So I would say. Even I would still keep it with the two thousand. So even with that, um, maybe three. And and then, if uh, w we have the costs for the ha hazardous waste this year, mm -hmm. um, you're still probably somewhere in the neighborhood of twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Twelve another eight or nine. You know, so but also, I mean, there's there's it, also the the um, for the volunteers. Uh, this is giving out to to everyone. Um, volunteers a uh, volunteer award. I think that was for, pass that back, Bill. The town volunteer uh, recognition that was uh, not to exceed uh, $500 for four awards. Um, and then there would have been, there are uh, students at the high school that go to a mock Senate. And um, I know that last year they had asked for help and we weren't able to get it in on time. but. I think that was what two hundred dollars a student. Yeah, and I put it two at two fifty because I wasn't sure the exact amount, not to exceed five hundred. Um, the town beautification, I can take that one or and leave it. It's just a, it was just a pot. So even with the Look. increase in the blues, and the um, uh, yeah. the uh, the other items that you mentioned, mm -hmm. and then if um, there's talk about Selectman Gorman is suggesting that increasing an amount for the key club project, mm -hmm. even right. if you did that, I yeah. mean. You're still probably only at Fourth, like 15, 14, 14, 14 right. 15,000. So, so we could probably and still also do for it. the food pantry here. Yeah, and if you probably have enough left over to do that, and, and so still do a beautification, then possibly. Okay, but at a smaller scale, right. I could live with that. What's the total we got for that, Nick? Well, just a, a rough uh, total, in probably looking at around 14, 15,000. Well, no, the total we have to spend. It's like 21? Well, t uh, 20, 20 or so uh, minus 2,900, call it, for the um, hazardous so waste. waste. Yeah. So 17,000. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're getting close, but it seems like most, if not all, of the goals that the board's talking about can be accomplished. Mm -hmm. So 17,000? Yeah. And to be honest with you, just my personal opinion, if, if we were close and we had $1,000 or so, I wouldn't mind increasing the scholarships either because mm -hmm. obviously it's... It's a um, it's tough enough paying for college nowadays, and that any little bit helps. So, yeah. all right. So, uh, should this go before the board on the 29th for yes. Yes. consideration? Yes. Yep. Thank you. Uh, the other thing we have is the health agent job. We're on our fourth one in eight months. I've been here. Um, we sent out. Uh, to have people that want to apply for the job. We got eight old ones and we had seven new ones. Uh, half the ones we got, they'd only apply to what we're looking for. So what I think I'll do is uh, wait till after the first of the year with the board's approval. Mm -hmm. And I'll go over these over the holidays and try to see what ones apply to what we're looking for and then bring it back to the board and okay. we can vote on it. Sounds good. If that's okay with the whole board. Yeah. Yeah. Through the chair, one of those, uh, one of them did look promising. Yeah, I um, can hear you. So. I said one of them did look promising. Um, I agree with you. There were um, some that weren't really what you were looking for or what we were looking for, but um, one of them did look promising. Well, I'll look them over and we'll see. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we have there. The last one is, yeah. which I think we already talked yeah. about. 
Yeah. We do the update on the... The update on the Hamden uh, County Health oh, yeah. Assessment. Yeah. Uh, that's We're uh, going to have a focus group that will be on January 7th, which is a Wednesday here at the Council of Aging. Um, it will just be a group of um, 8 to 15 people. Um, as we finish up this assessment, uh, there are 12 communities that are going through this assessment along with us. We are included in the 12, and this focus group um, is part of it. And then also if it, people could fill out those um, those surveys that are um, they're located at Town Hall, or you can go online and take them. And they're on the located on the town website. Only takes a few minutes. Thank you. Through the chair. Thank you for the Board of Health. Now what I'll, if, I, if you don't mind, I'll have you do the meetings, invitations, and sure. reminders. Or we sure. Sure. Uh, town council. Town offices and library closings at noon on Wednesday, December 24th, and close Thursday, December 25th, and Friday, December 26th, in observance of Christmas. Board of Selectmen meeting will be on Monday, December 29th at 6 p.m. at the Town Hall hearing room. The town offices and library clo will be closing at noon on Wednesday, the 31st, 2000, uh, December 31st, 2014, and close Thursday, January 1st. 2015 and Friday January 2nd 2015 in observance of the new year the MMA annual meeting and trade show will be on Friday the 23rd and Saturday the 24th at the Heinz excuse me convention center in Boston thank you mr. chairman yes. if I can make an announcement about that last item for the board members um, who are interested uh, in attending um, please let me know if you would like for the office to register you for the event. Also, um, members who have gone in the past have wanted to attend the Friday evening dinner. And if there are any other uh, paid events that you're interested in, let me know. There's quite a few events that are part of the yeah. cost of registration. Um, the other thing is that with respect to uh, securing a hotel room, there uh, the uh, Sheridan is the um, host hotel for the event. The board members would need to make those reservations on their own and be reimbursed uh, at a later date. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, next well, is... Can I just make a statement? Sure. Uh, I just want, I, I failed to do it when I had my time with the board, but uh, Sergeant Richard Bates is retiring effective Friday, mm -hmm. this oh. Friday. That's right. Uh, 1130, if you wish to join us at the police department with a pizza and a cake, as has been tradition. A uh, little fat pizza and a little fat cake. Uh, and give him a retirement wallet badge. Okay. For his, uh, Rick, uh, Rick's been a, a big asset to the department. He's served with uh, close to, if not 35 years, mm -hmm. with the uh, East Lamont Police Department. I really don't think he wants to go, but I'm uh, yeah. the time has a clock ticking, and uh, that's it. Right. Well, Sergeant Ginebro completed his training last Friday down in Rhode Island. Uh, he'll assume the position on uh, Saturday as the, the sergeant. He'll be back he'll be at 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. So, right. so if you're around Friday by all means, we'll have a little get together at 11.30 at the police department. That's the same time as the graduation in Stowe, correct? Uh, we'll be on the road. We'll be on the road, so can, we, can we do something? Stay. I'm on actually, the road? I can't make it to the stone one, so I'll come up to the police okay. station. Well, I have to, well, maybe you should do something the day before, too. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll catch up with him before he leaves. Sure yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, now, town council. How are you, sir? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right, we have Merry Christmas. some items here, and everything I believe is executive. We've got, executive. We've got two yeah, items with each chief, but one negotiations and one uh, a town incident, and then uh, we've got these items. I believe everything's executive. Everything will be executive, and the motion will be to go into executive session to discuss matters of collective bargaining uh, and matters of non union collective bargaining and to discuss. Uh, matters involving attorney-client privilege regarding um, activities of various employees of the departments. 
prior to you making the motion, mm -hmm. sir. May I take this moment to wish on behalf <coughs> of the board to wish everybody in our community and abroad Merry Christmas and happy holidays and have a safe and enjoyable time with your family. Thank you. I'd like to make the motion that he just said. Mm -hmm. So moved. Is there a second? Any discussion? No. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Selectman Aye. Gorman? Yes. Selectman Thorpe? Yes. Selectman Federici? Yes. Um, did, you put, did you add to it to, re to return only to uh, return? To return to open only to adjourn. Okay. To return to open only to adjourn. All right. Um, wonderful.